decided to stop at the Antelope Valley Indian Museum, which was on 150th Street once you got off the freeway. So it was a bit of a drive. We're waiting for having one of the tours, but while we're here, we're in the very front room. As you can see, this home is built into the rock. started building in 1928. They built the fireplace first. Where the table is, they lived in a tent for approximately a year. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let Ann here take over. All right, we'll And um, I just barely started. Um, I need to go and give uh, lunch breaks to some of the other volunteers. Okay. She just came back from her lunch break and she'll <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I met mean, this lady outside. <laughs> Little tree. This certainly isn't the largest Indian museum in Southern California, but it's definitely the most unique. I don't want to get in your way. Am I in your way? No, now? not at all. <laughs> okay. Give each of you one of these. This is a copy of our newsletter. The group that helps with the museum here. No, this one we can share it. Oh. It was purchased 10 years later by Mrs. Arnold, who kept it in the room for This was the first we have a in this room. We chiseled those uh, stairs out of the All this is living ground. That isn't fake, that's real. Now, there are places like behind here where there's a picture model, and over there where they had to have a flat surface. Mr. Edwards made that with a combination of plaster paris and leftover painting at the school. He was also an instructor in the Bill at the high school. He was quite an all around person. A professional clown, playwright, artist, <laughs> pretty good builder, I think, though he didn't claim to be. This building is not built according to any uh, code, but it withstood the Landers earthquake much better than some of the places around here that sustained some damage. Got a plain disturbed here. And if you go around, you'll notice that uh, most of these objects are in some sort of a column or holder. That's to protect them in case we do have a bad earthquake. We're not going to have one, just in case. Yes? I won't get in your car. Oh! <laughs> no, okay. It's all wrong. Denmark? No, it's all wrong. Okay, just put it in. <laughs> okay. That's Mr. Fowler. You see him in the southwestern. Uh, he rides out here with the results. There's quite a ways out here. Where's Fort Uh Almost due west. A little bit northwest. It's uh, 57 miles from here. I work at the Poppy Park, too, and that's 53 miles. I go the other way. When President Roosevelt was trying to put everybody to work, he had these initials, IRA. That meant Indian Reconstruction Act. And they were, the Navajos were instructed in uh, painting and drawing techniques. And it's a uh, technique they're still using to this day, very popular. Of course, they have some of the modern artists who are surrealists, they're popular too. <laughs> These are a number of grinding stones around the metal of the stone. All of the rugs in here are Navajos, except this large one, which is Indian all right, but it's Mexican. The black robe over there was a wearing robe. The men, all of the men, and some of the women were the, the handy. The people around here, though, uh, uh, didn't wear much uh, clothing at all. They had rabbit skin uh, uh, coverings that they used in the middle when it was cold, but mostly they just didn't wear any clothes. Uh, and cuts there. It's very, very strong. When the pioneers came to the valley, there was a lot of what they called petrified Joshua. Excellent. You called that a group of Indians cut Kahink? Chilingit. G L I N G I T. 
Indian names are hard to pronounce. I don't pronounce some of them properly. But actually, when you get right down to it, what we call the Indians is never what they call themselves. That they always refer to us as we, the people, um, in their own language. But we have assigned the names to them, many of the Spanish origin. So, they love it. <laughs> That is because the cotton wood is water seeds. And water is one of the most important things to the Southwest Indians because they don't have much. And they have all of these ceremonies to induce rain. And I personally know that they work at least some of the time because I was visiting the Old Variety Third Mesa with a class, I took a class of my other culture. <laughs> We were coming down, and we almost got washed off the road. Hi there. <laughs> He's number one grandson. Well, this is an unusual <laughs> bench. <laughs> oh. This looks like a, a small room that he had, all made out of rock. He just kind of built around it. As you can tell, did an awful lot of different artifacts. I'd say that this man loved Indians and the Indian culture, wouldn't you? like he's got a whole bunch of different types of trees and everything else. So it looks like he didn't tried not to disturb any of the mountain. You can see that he was into arrowheads and maintaining things he found out in this area. That's an early picture of Howard Arden Edwards. was he was making display. Now this is a cooking pot. This was a large storage pot. One number of heart from each other. Oh eight three something and then one is it's uh, three one and the other is three two. So. Okay. And these are showing um, seagrass. make some of their clothing out of seagrass. This shows some of the clothing. Believe it or not, the thing at the very top is a portion of someone's dress. The round thing is really a hat. There's some jewelry. And you can tell that they didn't carry as much stuff as we did because this is a purse. <laughs> 